Telco and Telecode suite of features. And what our suite of features includes is not just the promise of helping you author your code, but also helping developers refactor their code um, and other feature sets in the future. And so I'm here today um, because we are expanding um, the feature set that we have to offer for Python. Um, for those of you who already use IntelliSense, uh, maybe in VS Code, you've got our extension and you see our method suggestions with the star next to them. Um, but today we'll look at two new things that we're bringing to Python. Uh, one of them is what we call whole line completions, um, where we can now complete up to a whole line of code for you. Um, and the other being something that we call API examples um, that can help you learn new APIs that you're working with. Um, just before I continue, are there any questions so far? No, it doesn't look like in the chat. Okay, sweet. And how, okay. Cool. <clears throat> so I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Sorry, just looking for that button right now. <laughs> All right, there we go. <clears throat> And what you're about to see is my version of VS Code. I'm going to zoom in so that everyone can see this a little bit more clearly. Yeah, I can see it perfectly. Awesome. Sweet. Awesome. So uh, maybe we can start from the top of this file and uh, write it from the beginning. So as I'm writing my code here, uh, you'll see this gr these gray text suggestions, and it's more than one token. So this is part of what we call whole line completions, because we can now complete up to a whole line. Uh, we'll explore more as we continue. Um, but to accept this, I hit tab, and put map.lib, again, tab, tab here, accept, and I will import linregress from SciPy as well. On a data frame. Apologies for the yellow squiggles. I want to fresh install Windows here. The one thing I want you to notice with um, whole line completions is that sometimes we're. I hear a mic on. Hi, James. <laughs> um, is that sometimes I? Is that sometimes we're not quite sure what string to suggest. And so in these examples, when you hit tab to accept the suggestion, what we actually do is a snippet completion. So we move the user um, into that string so that they can specify just the string literal that they're looking for. So I'm going to hit tab and watch what happens with the cursor. So I hit tab and it takes me into the string here. So we'll specify our CSV file. And now let's take a look at how this API example might work. So maybe I haven't used the linregress function before, or maybe it's been a while. Um, there are a lot of packages that we work with on a daily basis. And so if I, if I mouse over this linregress method, you'll see in this pop-up that we suggest API usages um, for this method. So you see these top three usages, um, and they kind of they come from what we've learned from GitHub. But maybe you don't quite have enough context to make a decision uh, for which of these three usages you would like to do. Um, and so in this case, what I would do is I would click see examples from GitHub and we'll see kind of a pop-up on the side here. And in this pop-up, what we do is that we can show you greater examples from GitHub that give you more context as to how these are used. And we also provide a link to the GitHub source if you would like to take a closer look 
and how this method is being used in code. So what we're trying to do here is to save you from having um, to go to your favorite search engine um, and having to kind of do your query. Um, just to get a simple example, because maybe we can keep you in your editor and save you from having to context switch um, just to quickly figure out how to use a method that you may have used before or maybe you're unfamiliar with. Um, does that make sense to everyone so far? I'm happy to answer any questions. I think it's good. Yeah, we're looking good in the chat. Yeah, feel free to ask your questions. So, uh, maybe we'll switch gears a little bit and take a closer look at our whole on completions. Sweet. So I'm going to switch into some code here. Um, simple socket code. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a socket. Here you see the starred IntelliCode, uh, the starred IntelliCode suggestions. Um, and so these are the methods that we think you might be looking for. And so we uprank them in your IntelliSense list um, just to help you find them a little bit more easily. Or maybe it might help jog your memory for what you might want to try to do next. The other thing that we can do with the IntelliSense list is steer the completion that we're getting from um, the whole on completions extension. <clears throat> so if I scroll up and down, cursor up and down in the IntelliSense list, you can see that we are the model will return a different result. So this is one way to help you get to just the suggestion or prediction that you're looking for. Um, another way you can do this is just by typing. Uh, we allow you to kind of walk through the prediction. And naturally, if you type something different, we'll start giving you a different prediction. So maybe I start typing socket pair and I get that prediction there. So socket.socket. Um, and you can see here that it's completed the rest of, it's uh, predicted the rest of the parameters that I need to type. So we find that in some scenarios, particularly in commonly written code, uh, where the patterns are well established, um, that whole line completions works particularly well. Um, and so again, we've taken the IntelliSense that you've known and loved for years and just extended how you use that already. Um, you are used to hitting tab to accept, and you can continue hitting tab to accept um, this prediction. So I'm going to hit tab, tab. And so you might wonder, why is Aaron sometimes hitting tab once to accept the whole prediction? And why is Aaron sometimes hitting tab twice to accept the whole prediction? Well, when we built this, uh, we tried to extend the interface that you're already used to. And so if you're an IntelliSense user, you're used to tab accepting the first token that's accepted in the IntelliSense list. So let's see that in action. I'm going to hit tab here, and you'll see that it'll accept um, AF underscore INET. So I'm going to hit tab. And again, that's accepted the first token selected in the IntelliSense list. And if I hit tab again, it's going to accept the rest of the tokens. Tab. Let's continue. Stop connect. These aren't quite the parameters I'm looking for. Uh, let's say big.com here. And we are looking for port 80. Continuing on. Again, when you see me hit tab here, since we've got an empty string literal, my cursor will go into the string literal. Tab. Uh, not bling.com, we're looking for bing.com. Cool. 
And you can see here that it's also predicted the condition that I'm looking for. So while true, we'll receive data from the socket. Again, it's just the exact kind of line of code that I'm looking for here. Um, this isn't correct. I'm looking for if, if D, not if not B. So if B buffer dot append D. So this is correct here. We're not always correct, but there are ways to kind of steer the model um, into getting the results that you're looking for. Else break. Again, this is correct. And we will end this by closing the socket. So we've just run through my socket.py example. Uh, we've seen how IntelliCode can suggest parameters well here. Uh, we've seen how IntelliCode uh, can suggest uh, can suggest conditionals here. And we've also seen snippet completions work again uh, when the model didn't have a string literal to suggest. Um, we've seen that we're not always correct, but we discussed how just by typing or stepping through the prediction or using the IntelliSense list, you can kind of steer the you can kind of steer the the prediction that you're getting from the model. Cool. So the last thing that I'd like to show you is this also works in the VS Code Notebooks extension. So let's switch gears a little bit. Um, I've got an example here. Let's um, let's get rid of some code and uh, try to out there. Here, pulling up my example. So, from future import, we're looking for absolute import. This is correct here, and one more Unicode literal. So, let's guess that predict correctly. And so, we're looking for. Oh, that's what we're looking for, TensorFlow next. Uh, and so you can see, again, with some boilerplate code here, it can really save you a lot of tokens and help you type less and code more. Um, so that's IntelliCode's whole on completions working in our notebooks extension as well. Um, so you might be wondering, how do I find these extensions? Well. Some of these, these extensions are actually new experimental extensions that we're continue, continuing to work on and refine. So to find the API examples extension, um, it's called IntelliCode API examples extension. API usage examples here. And for whole line completions, again, you're looking for IntelliCode completions. So you might be wondering why we haven't included these extensions um, as a part of the main extension. Um, so as I've mentioned, um, these are experimental. We're continuing to refine the model and user interface. Um, but personally, as a fairly recent student who wrote a lot of Python code going through school, um, I wanted to share this with you all um, so that you can um, give it a test drive, um, let us know what you think um, ahead of this being included as a part of our general IntelliCode extension. Um, I'm really excited to hear about the examples that work well for you, um, your feedback for how we can improve the user interface, and especially the predictions or examples where we're not working well. I love to hear that. So what I'll do is I'll drop my social media um, into the chat um, so that you can reach out to me easily.